For the first time in an extensive interview, former WNBA player Candace Wiggins said the league's culture was full of bullying and jealousy. Wiggins told the San Diego Union Tribune that she was frowned upon as a straight woman, claiming 98% of WNBA players are gay, adding people were deliberately trying to hurt me all of the time. I'd never been called a B word so many times in my life than I was in my rookie season. I'd never been thrown to the ground so much. The message was, we want you to know we don't like you. Wiggins believed her pride in being a woman didn't fit well in the culture. Alicia, I want to start with you. When you heard these comments, what was your first reaction? My first reaction was my heart kind of dropped. And I was like, wow, where is all of this coming from? It was rather surprising. I was befuddled and baffled all at the same time, but um, concerned on a high level as well. Why concerned? Concerned because the the comments that she was making, the allegations were rather inflammatory. And she did rather put all of us in a box and created a stereotype that is very unpleasant in the eyes of the players that are still playing and former players that have moved on. What Candace said initially, which was in a one source story in the, the San Diego newspaper, the newspaper wasn't quoting any other player past or present, she said this was a culture uh, in the league and made very sweeping statements about the entire league, not just her experiences. Now she's backed that off a little bit to say, oh, this is how I perceive things. But I think all the players are saying, look, if you're saying this is a culture, this is something that it happens to everybody in the league or is league-wide all the time, that's something they you know, want to comment on because they, most all the people that I've talked to said that hasn't been their experience. Has anyone demanded an apology? You know, I think... I think there's been different blogs uh, that players have put out and, and statements they've put out where they've, and, and Monty Boyette's a good example, where she said, you know, she's admired Candace Wiggins all her life and is wondering why she chose to present, you know, these, these types of statements um, that were basically maligning the workplace atmosphere of the WNBA. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wake Up Report. And rather than re-sign with the WNBA for another couple of seasons, Candace Wiggins decided enough was enough and she uh, did not want to re-sign with the league because according to Miss Wiggins, the WNBA is full of lascivious lesbians, dangerous dykes, and b-balling bull daggers. So according to Miss Wiggins, we can now start calling it the WNB gay. Candace Wiggins, uh, in a bombshell interview uh, a couple of days ago, uh, said that she no longer desires to uh, play basketball for the WNBA because of its apparent culture of uh, lesbianism and um, the fact that 98% of the WNBA is gay, uh, which means if she has recently retired, <laughs> that means according to her, there's one heterosexual woman playing basketball for the WNBA. Now, I, I guess a league full of lesbian basketball players is not uh, that big of a deal. What is a big of a deal, though, is uh, Miss Wiggins' assertions of harassment. She was she was targeted specifically because she was straight in a league that is dominated by lesbian players. Uh, according to Miss Wiggins, throughout her uh, eight-year career, she was constantly harassed. She was constantly bullied. She was told that uh, she did not belong in the WNBA you know, because she didn't like to lick Kuncha, I guess, or, or whatever it was. So, I mean, however they chose to celebrate in those locker rooms uh, after games, uh, you know, is another story. But uh, Ms. Wiggins uh, said that she simply could not take the harassment anymore, even go so far, going so far as to say she preferred to play overseas uh, in Spain, Turkey, Israel, and Greece. I believe it was Greece where she helped the uh, Sony Athenaikos, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, to the uh, Euro Cup Women's Championship in 2010. Uh, she said her experiences abroad were vastly more supportive and positive than they were here in the United States with her own black women. Black women who I might add that she describes as mannish, man-acting men with vaginas. A lot of people get on me for talking about black women's behavior, but it seems that this black woman, not me, a black woman, 
has verified exactly what I have been saying about some black women is in that their behavior is so mannish and so mannish acting uh, that you might as well consider them uh, men with vaginas. And it also seems that uh, I don't know if you remember the old Don Imus blow up where he referred to um, uh, uh, some black female basketball players as nappy headed hoes, mannish acting and mannish looking, uh, just hardcore women. Well, it seems like uh, Mr. Imus uh, wasn't too far off the mark. His remark had to simply catch up with the reality of what was going on with um, uh, the WNBA. Uh, according to uh, Miss Wiggins, the uh, mindset of uh, many of the players uh, in the WNBA was um, that you had to, uh, in, in her words, you had to look like a man, you had to play like a man to get respect. She was the opposite, that's what she says, I was proud to be a woman and it didn't fit well in that culture. Now I'm kind of curious because if uh, the league is 98% gay, from a numbers perspective, there's more than enough gay women to go around for most of the gay women that are there. Uh, why would um, the focus be on one heterosexual woman because she's not sexually attracted to other women? Well, I, I, I guess I know what it is. It's that, that's like being a virgin, I guess, to, to a bunch of lesbians. You know, uh, you know, it's like, uh, well, if I can turn that one, that's like a woman who never had sex, you know, with a man. So, um, so I guess you can only imagine what kind of pressure uh, uh, this woman was under having to have to perform, uh, uh, you know, day in and day out on the court when um, you are surrounded by lesbian players who resent you because you're straight and I mean you I don't what is it you're on offense and defense you know here when when you on offense you on defense when your defense you, you know you're on offense and it's coming from both sides so um, now I'm also curious though as to uh, if this was going on for close to eight years uh, why didn't you report it why didn't you uh, why didn't why didn't you provide names of the people who were harassing you and uh, why didn't you make this uh, why didn't you sue the NBA, which uh, I don't know, you know, uh, if she talks to the right lawyers, I guess she may have a lawsuit uh, uh, coming up in the near future, which means she will undoubtedly make more money suing the NBA and selling out of court than she will, would have made playing as an actual player. But at the end of the day, she says uh, she doesn't resent anybody, and which is maybe why she didn't uh, turn anybody in. Uh, she didn't want to damage, uh, 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 I guess, the reputation of the league. Uh, you know, she says that the um, the the experience made her a stronger person uh you know she's i guess forgiven most of the people who have harassed her and uh she didn't want to dissuade uh younger uh straight players uh or future straight players uh from uh joining the uh nba but uh you know with a from i'm the WNBA. i'm sorry but uh with a reputation like that how do you tell straight female players that they are going to enter a league where there is active harassment you're just being harassed because of your sexuality and you expect me to get drafted into a league and play under those circumstances that that's a hard sell not to mention the fact that uh she has said she is going to write a book that is she's kept a journal of all of her experiences uh, with the WNBA and I guess a lot of that is going to center around her harassment that is not going to do or help matters not to mention the fact that she also said that the, the the WNBA is just in the toilet nobody watches it you know it's just vastly uh underperforming and uh I don't know uh, you know uh, is the NBA going to continue to sink money into the WNBA and with this type of behavior that uh, apparently has been running rampant in the uh, uh league that just does not make for a uh, strong case for keeping the WNBA around if this is the type of behavior to it that you're going to expect as a straight female player from the uh, majority of lesbians that dominate the league. Not to mention the fact that, you know, if this were a group of men uh, in any sport and they were, if this was a group of men in NASCAR and they were harassing Dana Kilpatrick like this, the backlash would be absolutely severe. Um, uh, the, the issue of sexual harassment of this woman would be front and center, but uh, we're not getting that uh, in the case of this. This is a culture of sexual harassment, a culture of bullying, a culture uh, that the uh, that the NBA, I, I have to say, probably has known about and um, has just 
completely swept this issue under the rug. The NBA did have an anti-bullying campaign, I believe. You know, what happened to that? Uh, you know, I guess the, these, the, the, the WNBA and all of its players missed the memo on, I, on attending that meeting, I guess. And at the top of the show, I uh, called, um, you know, uh, I guess the, uh, the majority of the WNBA's gay players, bull dykes and lascivious lesbians and, uh, you know, uh, all kind of horrible names. And, um, uh, and I did that for a reason. When Jackie Robinson broke that color line in uh, baseball, we do know, and it is well documented, the level of harassment that Mr. Robinson received by those white players could only be described as nothing more than pure racism at its finest. So if I were to call, if I was doing the same story on Jackie Robinson and I called those white players, a bunch of hunkies and crackers and, and rednecks and, and trailer park trash, um, most of you black people wouldn't have a problem with that. What this is, is flat out racism. Your black uh, people, your black women, have proven beyond the shadow of a doubt that black people can in fact be racist that uh, uh, based on this woman's sexuality and nothing more they chose to harass her intimidate her name call her bully her uh, 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 beat on her on that court tell her she did not belong in that league much like Jackie Robinson was told he did not belong in uh, Major League Baseball just like black quarterbacks were told that they didn't they lacked the mental capacity to be quarterbacks just like most blacks uh, blacks in soccer blacks uh, 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 you know in, in terms of sports and anything else well we would we would call it and decry it as nothing more than racism this is no different I tell you that black people like to make history in the worst of ways and this is an ironclad example of us destroying the myth that black people cannot be racist this is just because it's black on black does not mean that it is not racist Lisa Leslie Dawn Staley Teresa Witherspoon absolute uh, uh, cornerstone the architects of the WNBA and I, matter of fact I had the uh, I, I saw the New York Liberty play their first game in Madison Square Garden but the absolute architects of the WNBA their, their, I guess their legacy more or less you know not from a personal standpoint but today's crop I guess of woman hungry lesbians uh, has turned the league into nothing more than a brothel for um, uh, uh, lesbian players uh, absolute stain on the legacy of those great players who uh, paved the way for these uh, current players and uh, it's just absolutely uh, an embarrassment uh, to the league. If the WNBA uh, can't do any better than this, you know, fold the league up, uh, close it up, and call it a day, I guess. Uh, Candon Wiggins' book, though, however, uh, I can't wait till that comes out. I am definitely going to get that one and read it. Um, uh, I hope they make a movie uh, out of that book, man. That that would be something. But just a big bad stain on the WNBA. If you can't get it together, fold the league up. And I guess the lot of you uh, girls out there can go back to cruising the gay bars or whatever for your dates. This is KTM and the Wake Up Report saying think a little bit. It will do wonders for you. Mm -hmm.